Hello and welcome to Arts24. Today's edition is all about graphic novels as the Angoulême International Comics Festival celebrates its 50th anniversary. Each year, the city in Western France welcomes the best of the world's illustrators. And this year, the prestigious grand prize was awarded to Britain's Posey Simmons for her decades long career. She's just the fifth woman in the festival's history to win the prize. A pioneer of the British graphic novel, she's also written children's books and been a long time editorial cartoonist for The Guardian. Simmons is known for her gentle but cheeky humor. I was lucky enough to speak with her about the prize and about her career. Posey Simmons, congratulations. What does it mean to you to be awarded this Grand Prix d'Angoulême? It's just wow, extraordinary. It, it was unexpected really I, uh, um, I I was really surprised to be among the the last three names and uh, even more surprised you know to hear that I've won it was extraordinary you have long-standing ties to France you spent a year in Paris when you were 17 how did that experience shape you I think a lot um, it was the first time I'd been abroad ever uh, I'd never lived in a city. I didn't know a city I, because I lived in the country, and so to be immersed immediately in a big in a big city was uh, astonishing. And everything, of course, was different. That it was the first time I drank real coffee. Uh, I'd eaten garlic, you know that that sort of thing. But. Um, Paris is just a wonderful city to walk around. And uh, and so I spent, you know, I was going to galleries, I was going to bookshops, I was going to the cinema because it was so cheap, three, you know, two or three times a week. I, I, I just had a, a wonderful time. As you said, you grew up in the country, you discovered cartoons at a very young age. What made you fall in love with them? Um, I knew that they, I knew they were disapproved of, so, um, I mean, as long as you read books, we were allowed comics. And said that there was also a kind of slightly subversive um, quality to them. You've been an editorial cartoonist for centre-left British paper The Guardian for decades, starting in 1972. What aspects of British society do you most enjoy poking fun of? I think my um, instructions when I first uh, began a, a, a weekly cartoon strip uh, in uh, was to reflect the lives of, of the readers. They could have been centre, left or centre, or, or quite left, left wing. And I would somehow reflect uh, their lives and uh, they would, of course, have high standards of behaviour. It was that sort of milieu. Uh, the world of cartooning, particularly editorial cartooning, remains quite masculine. Why do you think that is? I don't really know the answer why why there weren't so many because it's to do with obvious observation and drawing and sense of humour which which women also have. Does it mean something to you to to be sort of one of the pioneers in comics as a woman? Yes, in an ideal world, the gender of a prize winner should not be um, important, um, but it's not a perfect. Per a perfect world, and um, so I, and many women are now uh, in the last decades have been a, a, infiltrated this male bastion, and so I'm I'm really happy to be part of to be part of it. I suppose when I worked for the Guardian, I worked for the women's page, and my editors were women, and I think that helped. And this particular page. Uh, concentrated at that time on, on particularly on women's rights. Your three graphic novels all feature female heroines inspired by 19th century literature. Gemma Bovary inspired by Flaubert's Madame Bovary, Tamara Drew, a Bonnard take on Thomas Hardy's Far From the Maddening Crowd, and Cassandra Dark, loosely based on Dickens' A Christmas Carol. What do those three characters represent to you? And is there one in particular you most relate? Cassandra Dark, I enjoyed doing because she's someone who um, doesn't give a toss about it, anything. So um, in, in other words, she's free. Um, women 
are really supposed to be nice and polite and uh, and, and kind. Um, and even if they're not, they you know people make them feel as though they should be. Cassandra Dark doesn't you know doesn't care at all. So so I like that. Um, the other two, of course, are are sort of victims. With Gemma Bovary, I wanted to contrast the the life of a modern woman uh, with with that of Madame Bovary, a, a Victorian one, woman, so um, who had to guard her reputation very, very carefully, whereas uh, both Gemma and Tamara, you know, it doesn't matter who they sleep with. Um, but there are consequences, and they're still bound by the chains of being judged on how they look and how they age and, yes, all those things. That was Angoulême Grand Prize winner Posey Simmons. A retrospective of her work titled Drawing Literature is currently showing at the Pompidou Centre here in Paris. Next to a graphic novel that comes from one of our France 24 colleagues, Smiling in Auschwitz, the story of a snapshot from hell is the latest from Stephanie Truyard. Her first graphic novel was based on the letters of a young Jewish girl imprisoned at a Nazi concentration camp. This time she tells the story of a young member of the French resistance who was deported to Auschwitz. In a photo, she's surprisingly seen smiling at Nazi authorities, a seeming gesture of defiance. Vincent Roux from the Social media channel Culture Prime spoke to the author Stephanie Truyard. I stumbled upon the photo of Lisette Moru, taken at Auschwitz, and I was struck by her smile. I wondered how anyone could smile in such a place. I wanted to learn more about her, and it became the starting point of this investigation. I've been working on the resistance movement in Brittany for about a decade. I started researching my own family history. My great uncle was executed in July 1944 in Brittany as a member of the resistance. In doing this research, I realized that women were rarely mentioned in the resistance. So I thought it would be good to focus my next project on women. She was an ordinary girl, living in the town of Port-Louis, near Lorient. She had dreams like every teenager, and during the Second World War, she stood up against the German occupation. She started with small acts of resistance, wearing the Cross of Lorraine, and gradually she carried messages and joined a resistance network. All this with the help of her boyfriend, Louis Séché. This story is also about love. And for these small things that may seem insignificant, they were reported by two women in their village, and these women ultimately condemned them to be arrested and deported, leading them to their death. What really touched me is that the memory of these members of the resistance was passed down from generation to generation. I met Louis's cousin. It was a very significant meeting because Louis didn't have any descendants. So his cousin entrusted me with some of his photographs. She said, soon there won't be anyone left to remember him, so I'm giving you his photos. It was very moving for me because I realized the extent of my responsibility to tell their story 80 years later. When I show the comic book to secondary and high school students, I remind them that Lisette and Louis were practically their age. They found themselves in a very difficult period of our history. I remind them that things can go wrong at any moment. And as Auschwitz survivor Ginette Kolanka says, it's important to show how far hatred can go. And finally, we can't talk about comics without talking about manga. France is the second largest consumer of manga after Japan, and it features prominently at Angoulême. 
This year, the festival shines a light on the work of Moto Hagio, born in 1949. She was part of the first generation of female manga illustrators. With her works like The Poe Clan, she pioneered the genre of shoujo manga aimed at young and adolescent women. We'll leave you with the work of Moto Hagio. Thank you so much for watching, and there's news coming up on France 24 right after this. France 24, every art form. Liberté, égalité, actualité. The 51% is celebrating its 10th anniversary. Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to The 51%, a new show about women who are... For the past decade, we've been reporting on women who are reshaping our world. Four dedicated hosts in English, French, Arabic and Spanish. A diversity of languages and offering a variety of perspectives as we hear from those pushing for gender equality. Covering a decade of struggle, perseverance and change. The only show of its type on a global newscaster. Find it here on France 24 and France24.com. Nos vemos próximamente en France 24. A très bientôt sur France 24. Voilà, je t'ai hâte. Bye for now.